Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade, fresh from the oven, polynomial system. So we have x cubed y plus xy cubed equals 10. And x to the fourth power plus 6x squared y squared plus y to the fourth power equals 41. We're going to be solving the system in two different ways. And at the end, I'm going to show you a really cool graph. All right, let's start with the first method. My first method is like no pain, no gain. First of all, I noticed that this is a homogeneous system. I hope I said it right. So we're going to let, and what is that supposed to mean? When you look at these terms, you notice that x cubed is multiplied by y. That kind of makes a fourth power. x, y cubed makes a fourth power. So everything pretty much here makes a fourth power in terms of variables. So in other words, if you replace y equals kx, uh, y with kx, then you're going to get a nice system and you're going to be able to eliminate uh, one of the variables. In other words, we're kind of changing the variable here a little bit to make this equation uh, solvable. All right, so by replacing y with kx, we get the following. First of all, from the top equation, we get kx multiplied by x to the third, so that's going to give us kx to the fourth power plus in the second one, uh, I mean, in the first one, second part, uh, k cubed x cubed is just going to give us k cubed and then x to the fourth power, and that equals 10. Obviously, here we can factor out x to the fourth. That's the goal. Let's go ahead and do it with the second equation. And now we're going to replace y with kx. So it's going to x to the fourth is going to be unchanged. y is going to be squared, so k squared x squared, but that's 6k squared x to the fourth power because x squared is multiplied by x squared and then finally y is going to be kx so it's going to be k to the fourth x to the fourth and this is equal to 41 so the only thing that i did was replace y with kx and uh, do it in both equations now let's go ahead and factor out the x to the fourth from the first one we get k plus k cubed and then I'm going to go ahead and divide it by the second equation, and x to the fourth can be taken out again. 1 plus 6k squared plus k to the fourth power. And since I'm dividing both of these equations, or side by side, I get 10 over 41. This doesn't look very good now, but we're going to be able to simplify this and basically reduce this into a single variable equation. Now this becomes a quartic equation in k if you cross multiply you get 10 plus 60k squared plus 10k to the fourth power equals 41k plus 41k to the third power. And putting everything on the same side, you get 10k to the fourth minus 41k to the third plus 60k squared minus 41k plus 10 equals zero. Awesome. This is a quartic equation, and solutions are not very easy to find, but there's a way to do it. You can use a calculator. You can just uh, use the rational root theorem because there are some rational roots. But let me go ahead and give you the solutions for free. K equals 1 half. K equals 2. And there are two complex solutions, which are given by 4 plus minus 3i over 5. Now, we see 1 half and 2, and this is normal because this is normal. Uh, because we have symmetry. Uh, X and Y can be switched around, so if you get Y equals 2X, it also means Y equals uh, X equals 2Y. That's why we have this uh, situation here. So let's go ahead and, so it doesn't matter which one you use. That's what I'm, I was trying to say. Let's use K equals 2. That means Y equals 2X. Oops, I wrote 2K. Y equals 2X. And now, this is a good thing to use because we can just plug it in. What is my first equation? x cubed y plus xy cubed equals 10. That looks a little simpler. Replace y with 2x. And then you're going to get 8x cubed here. And this gives us 2x to the fourth plus 8x to the fourth, which is 10x to the fourth equals 10, which means x to the fourth equals 1, if you divide both sides by 10. And this gives us two possible solutions in the real world x equals 1 or x equals negative 1. Now, uh, the negative 1 comes from the fact that, you know, th these uh, variables are being uh, squared uh, or multiplied together to get the fourth power, so it doesn't matter. 
Uh, but uh, if you just use x equals 1, you're going to notice that y equals 2 because y is 2x. And then if x is equal to negative 1, then you're going to get y equals negative 2. So this gives you two ordered pairs, 1, 2, and negative 1, negative 2. But since x and y are interchangeable, this also means that 2, 1 is a solution, and negative 2, negative 1 is also a solution. And let's go ahead and take a look at the second method now. This brings us to the end of the first method. So the first method is basically looking at it from a homogeneous equation perspective and using the substitution y equals kx, which is always, almost always used with homogeneous equations. Now, let me rewrite the system. So you get to see what it is. x cubed y plus x y cubed equals 10. And the second equation is x to the fourth plus 6 x squared y squared plus y to the fourth equals 41. Now, this should look familiar to you from a binomial theorem perspective. If you dealt with binomial theorem before, you should definitely know this. So I want you to notice, I want you to notice, I wanted to use a different color, but I guess you couldn't do it. Okay, I want you to notice that x plus y to the fourth power can be written as x to the fourth plus 4x cubed y plus 6x squared y squared plus 4x y to the third power plus y to the fourth power. Now notice that our system kind of looks like this. If you isolate, for example, this one, this one, and this one. That's how this problem was actually made. Looking at an expression, expression like this and then breaking it down and so on and so forth. So we notice that these two terms appear with a coefficient of 4, but that can be easily taken care of. So what am I trying to say? This is what I'm trying to say. We know the value of x to the fourth plus 6x squared y squared plus y to the fourth. And then we can take out a 4 here and write this as 4 times the quantity x cubed y plus xy cubed. Now and remember, this is x plus y to the fourth power, but we do know the value of this and that. So we can substitute. What is that equal to? The x to the fourth stuff is 41, so this is 41, and this is 10, because it's given by the equation. So we kind of take a system and turn it into a single equation. Okay, cool. So 41 plus 4 times 10 is 81, so from here we get x plus y to the fourth power is 81, which implies two things, either x plus y is equal to 3, or x plus y is equal to negative 3. In the real world, again, we're looking for real solutions here, but we could also find the complex solutions. I'll, I'll tell you how to do that, uh, but basically this is what you get from here. Now, how can I proceed with the solution? Well, I do know that x cubed, y cubed, so this part here, this stuff, is equal to 10, so I can go ahead and use it. x cubed, y plus x, y cubed is equal to 10. I can go ahead and factor out an x, y here, and write this as xy times x squared plus y squared equals 10. Great, now I don't know xy, I don't know x squared plus y squared, but these two expressions are related. I can go ahead and factor this expression or just square x plus y. Since I know that x plus y is 3 or negative 3, its square is going to be 9. So we can safely say that this equals 9. And then we do know that uh, x plus y is equal to 3, so its square is 9, and then we have the following system. So how am I going to use these together, right? Well, here's the thing I can do. I can kind of isolate. Let's go ahead and use substitution here. Allow me to call this expression P for product, okay? And let's call this S for sum of squares. It's a sum still, so I'm going to call that S. So we get from here S plus 2P equals 9. So that's one equation. I do need another equation to solve for S and P, but if you look at the second equation right here, that gives us what we need. It is P times S, right? P times S or PS equals 10. So now we got a system which we can easily solve by substitution. Let's go ahead and replace S with 9 minus 2P. And if you do that here, you get P times 9 minus 2P equals 10. That gives us 9p minus 2p squared equals 10. And if you put everything on the same side, on the positive side, 2p squared minus 9p plus 10 is equal to 0. Now, this is a quadratic equation, which would be easy to solve. 
I'm pretty sure you guys can solve this. Let me give you what the solutions are. P equals 5 halves and P equals 2 from here. So what is that supposed to mean? This means we already knew that X plus Y is 3 and P was the product, so X, Y equals 5 halves. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for now. In other words, this gives you complex solutions. I'll tell you how to find them from which equation. But the other case is going to give us something nicer, which is the real solutions, the real deal. So this, think about it, like we're looking for two numbers whose product is 3 and whose whose product is 2 and whose sum is 3, those numbers are 2 and 1 and 1 and 2. So from here you can safely say that, hey, we're looking for 1, 2 and 2, 1 as our ordered pairs. So those are going to be the real solutions. For the complex solutions, this is what you can do. You can kind of form an equation uh, whose solutions are x and y, so kind of like t squared minus, and using the Vieta's formulas, this turns into t squared minus 3t, plus 5 half equals 0. And if you look at the discriminant, you're going to get a negative discriminant from here, which means you're going to get complex solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this because it's really cool. Here we go. Yay, beautiful. Now, we do see a closed curve here. The orange one is x to the fourth power plus 6x squared y squared plus y to the fourth power equals 41. So that's kind of like a square looking round, uh, roundish thing, uh, which is kind of tilted. Uh, it's a really interesting curve, but it's closed. Uh, the other one is kind of like symmetrical with respect to the origin because it's, I hope it's straightforward. And you can see the intersection points of these two curves as the solutions to our system. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.